Hello and welcome to the KPI Institute's webinar, Key Performance Indicators Past, Present and Future. My name is Andre Costa and I will be your host for today along with our presenter, Alina Mirtoy. This webinar is part of a series of free educational materials that aim to enhance the knowledge and know-how of those interested, while also creating a bridge between us as a company and you, our public. The KPI Institute is a research organization specialized in business performance. It operates research programs in 12 practice domains, each linked to a certification course ranging from strategy and KPIs to employee performance and from customer service to innovation performance. The KPI Institute continuously builds on its values of best know-how, data and facts and common sense to achieve its mission of integrating performance as a discipline through research, publications and, what interests us today, through educational programs such as this webinar. Today, 14 years after the KPI Institute was created, we can proudly say that our products have reached professionals in five continents, and that our public comprises a worldwide community of 73,000 members online and 28,000 registered companies on smartkpis.com. Today's webinar will provide an opportunity for professionals to discover what has changed and gain insights regarding future trends in KPIs. And it will be delivered by Alina Mirtoyo, Benchmarking and Business Research Specialist at the KPI Institute. As a research specialist, one of Alina's most significant research programs focuses on developing a global benchmarking study in the utility sector for three major utilities, water, gas, and electricity generation, comprising worldwide data and a national indices catalog. As an educator, Alina delivered the Certified KPI Professional Course Certified Benchmarking Professional Course, and Certified Performance Management Professional Course. All three as an in-house and open house, open house course in the United Arab Emirates and Romania, and several webinars on the topic of performance management and benchmarking. Alina's academic qualifications are in the field of administration. She is currently a PhD candidate researching performance management and strategy for advocacy campaigns. She has a bachelor's degree in European administration and a master's degree in NGO management. This presentation lasts between 30 to 45 minutes. Please feel free to ask any questions you might have during the webinar as they will be answered at the end of the presentation in our Q&A session. Enjoy the KPI Institute's webinar, Key Performance Indicators, Past, Present and Future. Now I would like to invite Alina to begin her presentation. Hello everyone, uh, thank you Andre for your presentation. Welcome to today's webinar and um, during this, um, let's say, hour that we have together, we will discuss about KPIs. Why are they important for organizations? Why do we use them? What are the main challenges in working with them? As um, responded by professionals worldwide to our, um, our survey. We will take um, and discuss the first four steps of the KPI life cycle one by one in order to better understand each phase. Um, and the last two phases will be um, described, presented, discussed by my colleague Christina in the upcoming webinar. So today we will focus on KPI selection, KPI documentation, data gathering and target setting. As Andre said, we will have a Q&A session at the end, but during the webinar, if you have any comments uh, regarding the topic that we're on, please feel free to make the comments and, um, and so we can have some interaction. Um, what is our aim today? Well, we should be able to recognize the main challenges in working with KPIs, um, receive some in-practice recommendations for each one of them and identify um, possible um, scenarios of how trends in performance measurement can affect your organization. The webinar is named KPIs present, uh, past, present and future. Given that we will explore together the results of our latest um, survey, which is State of Performance Improvement and KPI Practice Report 2017, but we will explore it in comparison with the results of last year's survey. Based on this comparison, we should be able to discover how usage of KPI has changed during the last year and how it is expected to change in the future based on this trend. 
Also, uh, each and every one of you will receive a copy of the report uh, free of charge when it will be released. Um, now, before we start um, with uh, four, uh, four phases, I would like to discuss a bit of the methodology and the context of KPI usage. So the report, um, the report is an annual primary research study deployed worldwide. And for 2000, it started in 2015, and for 2017, the data was collected between July and December. 90% of the organizations that participated to the study do use performance management system, either at operational, strategic, or human resources management level. Um, while in 2016, um, it mainly operated at operational level, as 49% of the respondents said, and strategic level, as 32% of the respondents agreed. Um, now, let's start with, with the first question of our context. So, what is the knowledge and skill level of managers worldwide in their um, in organizations worldwide? Sorry. Basically, most respondents agreed that the knowledge and skill level of managers is still moderate. So approximately half of them, as you can see, indicated that it's moderate, and only 25% of the cases indicated a beginner level. As for the advanced or proficient, you already see the numbers are, um, are quite low. And this hasn't changed a lot during, um, during the year because the numbers are the same with 2016 or almost the same. Also, this confirms that there is room for improvement as far as KPI working skill and knowledge are concerned. And given that management, management role is to support or promote the, um, the performance management system, but also they have to take decisions. They are the one that take decision based on the KPIs and the data. They should be able to work with KPIs and understand the performance management system in order to take better decisions, of course. Hence, um, since there was no improvement or little improvement seen during 2016, 2017, our recommendation is for managers um, and not only to take their time um, to go to trainings and on this topic or attend a workshops that will give them um, more insight on the topic. Otherwise, the trend will be kept. Uh, there will be little improvement seen. And on the long run, the performance management system, if not managed correctly, might prove itself um, to be of no help. And the challenge here is to make managers really understand what the stakes are and what they need, why they need such training, and also the relevancy of, a sound, of having a sound performance management system within the organization. So first, first challenge is to make sure people that work with KPI and have to take decision have the, rel the relevant knowledge and skills for, uh, for this and are able to work with, with KPIs. Regarding the, the impact of uh, using KPIs, as we can see, it's mostly, it's mostly positive. And um, although the numbers are quite, quite high in favor of, um, of having positive results when using KPIs, this dropped a lot um, in comparison with 2016 when 80% of the respondents said that using KPIs has a positive impact and only 3% said that there was a negative impact associated with performance management systems. Um, now, for, um, for improving this, first of all, we have to have the management on board, as we said. And we will talk later about targets and how can they, um, how can they affect positively or negatively the usage of KPIs.
I would like to start a poll right now and see what your um, what's your opinion about this. What are what is the most challenging aspect of working with KPIs within your organization? Is it selection, documentation, target setting, data gathering, or data visualization? So during the next minute, if Andre can please start the poll, I would like you to to select what you think is the most challenging aspect. Okay, so um, let's take a few more seconds to make sure everyone voted. However, uh, meanwhile, I will give you the results of what um, what our uh, what our respondents said. Mainly, data gathering is the most challenging aspect for organizations, and followed by KPI selection. If um, if you want um, more historical context, KPI selection was the most challenging aspect. Um, in 2015. However, in 2016 and in this um, in this year, we have seen that data gathering took its place. Uh, thank you very much, Andre. We have the results of the poll, and um, it seems that 56% of you said KPI selection, and 44% said target setting. Um, now. We will um, we will be discussing why we could have challenges in KPI selection or target setting, but for um, first of all, let's take the data gathering and the potential difficulties here in collecting KPI results could be associated with the lack of um, of a standardized data collection template, and people can send data however they want. Maybe we don't have a process in place and they they don't know exactly when to send the, the data or to whom. Um, data accuracy could be another problem because this is hardly uh, to, to see. We have to ask people to send us raw data in order to actually check the accuracy. Data completeness um, is because, again, people might not send you the data um, because they don't know how to do it or they don't know how to extract it and data tim timeliness. They do not send the, da the data in time. So when the decision has to be made or the report has to be compiled, we do not have the, um, the necessary data. However, as seen in, um, in the poll as well, KPI selection remains um, one of the major challenges in working with KPIs. And a KPI selection process can fail in delivering the expected outcomes when there is little understanding about KPI um, uh, key performance indicators, or when the right people are not sufficiently engaged, or they do not have uh, the necessary the necessary knowledge, or even when the strategy is not clear. So if we don't have clear uh, goals, clear strategic objectives as an organization, it will be really hard to select KPIs that are going to measure that particular objectives. If our management or the people who manage the performance management system do not have enough, um, enough understanding or enough knowledge about the process, then they might not select the, the correct KPIs. Also, if the people that have to work with them, that have to, that actually do the process every day or the people who have to who are in the first line let's say do not are not sufficiently engaged they will not give their their input so um, these are the main challenges when um, gathering data or selecting uh, or, or selecting kpis for the target setting because the difference of your poll was not um, was not a lot, a lot, so it's 44% of the people said target setting is um, is definitely an issue. Um, what can what can be a potential cause 
that target setting becomes a challenge is because we don't know exactly um, how to how to settle the how to set a target without this influencing badly the people without um, making sure that it is achievable that people can work with those targets and also when uh, when we set the target we have to we have to make sure we we know our environment and we know um, we know how other companies in the field are um, are doing or what the, their targets their targets or results are so basically we have to have a sound a benchmarking um, project in order to to make sure the target is set correctly and not only the the external benchmark but also the internal one following this um, we will see what are the main reasons to use kpis why do people care about the performance management system or kpis this much and why is it such a let's say hot topic well it is because as we see here, people said it brings engagement. And whenever you use it, it, let's say it promotes a sense of ownership and makes people engaged when you tell them um, what is their work, um, what is their work measured? How is their work measured? However, um, if we look at the 2016 report, there is a shift because usually people said that using KPIs would bring um, clarity, will make, will make it clear for everyone what we measure as an organization and what is important for us. We'll make it clear what the objective means because we have the KPI and we have the target. The other, uh, the other main argument was improvement because, well, we measure and based on what we measure, we can analyze the data and we can make um, resolutions to change something if the measurement shows we are, um, we are lacking something. And the third was focus. Um, it helps us focus on what is really important for the organization, given that nowadays within a company, we have a lot of metrics, a lot of measurements, people focus on the data a lot, but we lose focus on where we want to be as an organization or our strategic goals. And how, we, how from what you can see here, focus is almost the last one in, um, in um, in people's uh, I, uh, opinion, however, make being sure or assuring that our employees are engaged and um, and they are um, working towards a goal together is a main reason for using KPIs. Right now, um, if you'd like to to use the chat again, I I would remind you. I, I am curious to see uh, what are the main reasons your organization using K, you, is using KPIs, or if it's not using, um, I would like your, your input in whether you should be using or not. Now we're done with the context, so we're moving on to KPI selection, which seems to be, um, an, well, let's say, an, a challenge for um, your organizations. So first of all, we were saying how strategy really matters and having um, strategic objectives in place, it's really important when selecting KPIs. As we can see here, most of our respondents said that they do have at least one KPI um, associated with, um, with the strategic objectives. And this link with the strategic objectives is of most importance for a successful KPI selection. And this should be constantly considered in order to achieve an optimal performance result. Um, what other recommendation I could, give, I, I could give you here is to select at least two KPIs for 
each uh, strategic objective, this will help us balance, for instance, quality with quantity. We want to make sure our people are performing well in terms of numbers, but we want to also make sure that their the quality of their work is is high. So if we have um, people in production, we want to measure how many products they uh, they do per day, but we also want to make sure that there are no errors or there are little errors done um, when uh, when when um, product in production. So achieving optimal results is definitely um, is definitely linked with the strategic objective. And um, if we if we can see here the discrepancy between the um, um, the numbers is not very high. And also I can I can say that historically there are not a lot of changes. So people usually have more or less one KPI um, for the strategic objective. And um, in the selection in the selection process, we need to make sure we are involving a lot of people or a, var a variety of key stakeholders because we need their input. Us as, let's say, managers or the person who is in charge of um, building the performance management system and selecting the KPIs. We are not there in production or um, with the customer service team or with the sales team each and every time. So we don't know exactly what's, um, what's happening when working in the first line. Um, we will need people um, from that place. So the employee that's working, the KPI owner, the data custodian who is going to help us um, define the KPI, we need to make sure they are, um, they are involved in this process. As we can see here, most people say that they are involved to, to a certain extent. The numbers for last year show little difference. So 30% of professional admits they have um, the key stakeholders of the organization being modestly involved. And um, why, again, why we need this is because stakeholder engagement in the KPI selection process ensures that KPIs are appropriately selected. This is one way of making sure that what we select is actually going to fit with people that are working on that process, expect and um, and need to be measured. It's also and it's ensuring that it's also relevant for the strategic objective. Um, again, there are not many many difference from from last year. And some a type of stakeholders that can help are not limited, but they include uh, KPI owners, data custodians, suppliers. You have to have a facilitator for um, for such um, for uh, for such a process. You have to um, have the management, which is very importantly importantly, of course, and you may even have input from your clients or suppliers see what they expect maybe the quality maybe you have um, you have um, expectations from your suppliers and um, they have expectations from you you can gather this type of data you do not include them in the selection process per se but you can gather data for them um, now in order for for kpis to appropriately reflect on companies' achievements, the KPI selection process should be well-defined. And a thorough selection process concludes with selecting KPIs that are relevant, measurable, and, as I said, balanced. Quantity with quality, you maybe measure effectiveness and um, efficiency, but you don't measure just one part because you, um, you might need the other one as well. The, um, the 
way of selecting KPIs or the recommended way by, by us is a KPI selection workshop, which is frequently used in order to facilitate the selection process. Uh, this could be time consuming and um, could be burdening for some people of the organization because it takes a lot of time, but the results are, um, are good and it's an intense filtering. If you gather all people in one room and they focus on this only, then you might, you might actually have um, relevant KPIs at the end of this um, KPI selection workshop. However, it needs uh, to be prepared from, the, um, from, from before. You have to have the facilitators that are going to send the materials to everyone, are going to invite, make sure, and let's say prepare the, um, the KPI selection workshop framework. After we have the KPI selected, what do we do with them? Well, we document them and we make sure we use a standardized format, isn't it? From the response here, we can see that, well, the majority of people use a standardized format in a way or another, and only 34% don't use one. The numbers are almost the same as last year, and KPI documentation form seems to be seems to be very um, seems to be very familiar within organizations. Why are they vital in performance management? Is because um, they have a multitude of uh, benefits, such as they facilitate the communication process. If we have a standardized documentation form, it will it will help us communicate better and people can go read that and they will have less questions. Everyone that is involved in the process will know exactly what we mean when we say, well, budget variance, for example. They will know, they will have there the definition, they will have the name of the KPI, of course, they will have they will have the form, the calculation formula, the submetrices, and they would also have um, where to gather the data from. Um, these are main information when using a um, documentation form, but some other uh, fields such as the KPI owner, the reporting frequency, uh, limitations if there are any, can be added to, um, to a documentation form. Once we have documented, we are get going to set the target. You mentioned this is, um, is a challenge for you in real life. But when setting the target, one question is if they are realistic. And I think this is one of the, the challenge or the main challenge, um, the main challenge people, uh, people have. Are the targets realistic? Well, one of the most important field in the KPI documentation I was mentioning is the KPI target. And setting this target will support the decision-making process by enabling us to compare the results to expectations and linking the results to actions. So basically, if we have one person from production who has to produce 30 items per day and it only produced 15 for three months, we will know that there, there is an issue. Either the target is set too high, either the person is, um, is underperforming or there are some problems. But it will show us there are problems and it will help us um, analyze this uh, this problem and take decision. Either change the process, either change some uh, the machine or whatever they're working with, either uh, helping the person develop the skills they need. So targets are used for um, for getting the desired results or making sure we are getting the desired results. They also have um, a big influence on 
professionals' behavior towards reaching them. So they are a starting point for the measurement process, but people might feel they might might feel they have a negative um, neg might they have a negative um, side because you are forced to reach a number. However, if they are realistic and if targets are established through consultation, then we can make sure these are not burdening for our people and they are in line with, um, with the reality. So um, with the consultation, what we can see here is that most professionals or most respondents to our survey said they use some type of consultation with staff members when um, when uh, when setting the target. Setting the target with professionals who are directly involved in the performance management is mandatory. As I said, they will not be um, relevant or the KPIs might be set too high if people are not involved. So KPI owners and data custodians, for instance, will provide valuable input with regards to how achievable and motivating the set targets are. Um, consult consulting the staff member um, seems, to, seems to be mostly, well, to high extent, seems to be a, a common practice. And only 29% uh, don't, um, don't use this type of practice. And as we said, KPI targets create a motivating or should be creating a motivating environment. People should feel more engaged. They should feel um, a sense of ownership to reach the, those targets. And as, he, as seen here, most people said that they are mo motivated to a moderate extent given uh, the KPI targets. However, the same professional said that engagement from employees is one of the main factor they use KPIs. So here it's still um, where we, we need to work as organizations to make sure that the targets actually create a motivating uh, working environment. And um, before going back, now actually before going back to, to uh, going further to KPI uh, data gathering, I would like to stick a bit here. So what is your opinion on the matter? Here, do you feel that targets create a motivating working environment or a negative behavior from your employees? I would really like to I would really like to have a, an answer to these questions and uh, talk on the topic because I feel that having fair targets and adjusting the targets um, regularly based on input from from employees is a factor that will make sure there will be no negative behavior. Have you encountered a situation where targets lead to negative behavior, for instance? And here, let me mention some, some negative uh, behaviors. It's that, for one, people could feel that the targets are always set too high, that when asked, um, they will try to establish lower targets than the realistic ones, or they will try to influence you to establish lower targets. Also, um, they, as we said about the balancing of KPIs, some will choose to do the number and make sure they have the number of products, for instance, if working in production, but um, without taking into consideration the implication on other areas of the business. If there is low quality, 
even though they achieve the targets, the low quality of the products will influence other parts of the organization. For instance, People will start complaining, you will lose customers, and this can go on. Another negative behavior um, could be influencing results through unapproved means to ensure target achievement. So if you work in a call center where you have to have as many calls as possible, you can well hang up the telephone and say it's been um, a system error. Um, looking for, let's say, unethical behaviors in order to make sure you achieve your target. And one other problem, this is a really big one, could be that you disregard some safety consideration in the process of meeting those targets, especially for hard industries. and making sure you have realistic targets will help mitigate the risk of one of these uh, negative behavior happening. Now we can move on to data gathering. And one question would be, um, how frequent do we face various challenges when, um, when talking about data gathering? So when it comes to performance measurement, a successful data gathering process will ensure that the data is accurate, the data is complete, and the data is submitted in time in order to be able to have to take the decisions, to analyze it and take the decisions. However, the, the data gathering process is never easy because you have to work with a lot of people, because you have to make sure everyone knows the process is on board and they will send the data in time. Another problem would be maybe the lack of integration between databases. So you need to gather the data from, well, production, HR, customer service, sales, then each and every one of them might work in a different system and might send you the data differently if we don't use a data gathering template. This challenge is simply solved. People have to know the process and use the data gathering template, send them um, that template in advance and ask them to fill them that template in. This will, um, this will help us analyze the data um, and have it standardized. Now, data submission delays can only be solved if we have everyone on board and people are committed to this process, they know, they understand the importance and they understand why submitting that data is important for the, the entire process. So um, we, need, we need people on board and engaged. The lack of integration or the unstandardized data, again, it's so easily solved with, um, with a template. However, the unavailability of data should be taken into consideration when setting the KPIs. If we are unable to, to gather data for this KPI for a long period of time, it's of no use having it there. It's of no use um, using it because, because, well, the lack of data. So we need to make sure in the KPI selection workshop that we select the KPIs who can be measured. Um, here, one other tip would be to use a software. Using um, an automated software could help us a lot of, a lot of um, time and trouble. Most professionals still use Microsoft Office, which offers a variance of, um, of um, well, let's say it, it offers a lot of help um, and help us, helps us analyze the data. The only problem with, um, with it is that we can not really automate it. It's not an integrated software that 
is only for performance management and will um, will give us a lot of insight. Um, we do recommend people that only started to use a performance management system to use Microsoft uh, Microsoft Office, but for people who can afford a customized software solution would be the best idea. An integrated performance management software could um, could help us have from from the strategy to each and every one of the employees have all the results and where we want to be. So it will offer a big picture that is necessary for um, for organizations when um, when uh, taking decisions. Also, this type of software solution will um, will help us deal with uh, data accuracy because we don't have to transfer um, data from one file to another and so on. We will have them all there. It will help us with timeliness. We don't have to always wait for people send us uh, the information, but we can, let's say we are one click away from actually getting the information we need. And it will also be standardized given that we will have um, a software solution that works in a certain way. Um, as a, as a, let's say, conclusion to, to our webinar today, the overall performance, um, performance maturity level is still leaves room for, uh, for development. This is revealed by our 2016 survey, by our 2017 survey. In comparison to last year results overall, the performance management best practice um, do not seem to be applied with the same consistency. So we've seen how people consider that maybe the KPIs have more negative um, than positive value for the organization. They don't use um, uh, standardized formats or um, software solutions as much as they used to, and they are not as consistent or the framework is not um, as structured as it used to be. Um, however, if, um, if we're going to take what we've discussed today, well, in the process of closing this gap and making sure the performance management system is a reliable one, is a structured one, and um, it will help our organization going towards the goal of achieving a performance culture within the company, we need to make sure that the key stakeholders are involved in the um, KPI selection process. We need to make sure that we will use standardized formats and um, a process is put in place. Also, we need to check the data reliability and establish targets through consultation. Um, as far as where the performance management system or the measurement system, because that's what we've discussed today mostly, is going in 2018, I think that more and more professionals should focus on learning the basics of KPIs and learning the basis of performance management system, because otherwise the system will fail if people do not have the understanding when applying it. So this, for one, learning about KPIs and learning how to work with KPIs is one thing that should change during 2018. And we, we will need more people professional in this uh, domain. Another part would be that more and more organizations will go to using an automated software an automated solution and having everything on just one software rather than combining a lot of them, rather than using Microsoft Office and so on. So from my point of view, using technology and using people with expertise or knowledge um, in performance management system is where it should go in 2018 because keeping this trend of um, 
of moderately being there, it's not going to be helpful for the organizations on the long run. These were also one of um, our respondents' suggestions to have an automation, uh, automated solution, having a performance management system integrated and aligned between organizational strategy, objectives, and actual activities. So we can conclude that there is a lot of interest in the area and people are more and more interested in this topic. However, they are trying to unformalize it a bit. Um, this is uh, this is all from today from my side. If there are any questions, Andre, could you please help me with this? Uh, yes, so if anyone has any questions whatsoever, any curiosities or queries, please feel free to address them now. We'll wait a couple of minutes. All right, so we've received a few questions. So the first one would be, how would you recommend someone to um, develop the mindset of a stakeholder and convince them of just how important KPIs are? Well, if, um, if by stakeholder we mean let's say the um, the management we will need to have different um different um attitudes towards management or our employees with the management we need to get their buy-in by presenting what's in it for them and how will a performance management system actually help the organization perform better with the employees showing them what the goal is showing them that we are one big team working for um for these particular objectives that we have chosen and making them engaged and giving the sense of um, ownership of what they're doing should be the best approach so with the management showing what's in it for them with the employees trying to get their um, their engagement and show them give them ownership on the process and show them how KPIs will actually um, give them that ownership and help them see what they're working on how they're performing and also what's more important here with the employees is to not suggest that we're doing this in order to punish someone because this is not what the performance management system should do, it should help organizations perform better, not um, punishing people. We can also link it to rewards for the employees. So we can we can do this as a maybe a game or give them prizes or give them performance bonuses, but show people what's in it for them. This would be my recommendation. Thank you very much for your answer. Now, another question. Can you give us a brief short overview of the difference, the general difference between qualitative and quantitative KPIs? Okay, sure. So in practice, 
there are no qualitative KPIs. They are KPIs that uh, show quality. So if we are working on production, because I kept giving this example um, earlier, if we ha are working on production, we have, for once, we will want to see how people perform in terms of how many products they make per day. So this would be a quantitative KPI. It will show us the quantity. It will show us how many invoices they processed, how many um, items they produced, how many calls they have taken, and so on. With the qualitative KPIs or the ones reflecting quality, it will show us the quality of their work. So for instance, um, number of errors in, um, in um, processing the invoice or number of errors in, um, in producting something on, on the product or number of customer complaints. It will show us again, it will reflect a quality of a service or of certain product rather than how many were produced. So this is the main difference between the two of them. All right, thank you once again. And another question we've received right now, after you select a KPI, for how long shall it have to be observed in order to determine if that's the correct one to choose for that particular situation? So um, from my experience, I would suggest you to to try and measure it at least three to six months in order to see if that KPI is actually going to help you or not. It, it's, if, you're, if you will keep changing the KPIs every one or two months, it, the, the entire performance management system will lose the stability. And for one month or even two months, it won't show a lot. But if you take it from three months further, then you should be able to realize if one KPI is actually helping you on the decision you make, or it shows you something that's important for the organization, or it just, um, well, it's not the right KPI to measure. It's just a good metric that we can keep on the dashboard. All right. So basically, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, yes, I wanted sorry. to say that three months. Then um, we can move on to a follow-up question. And can you tell us again briefly in very general lines, what are the types of KPIs, like in general, the major types of KPIs that one can try to measure? The major... Well, it depends. Do we mean um, how we balance them or the major types as in, um, there are, let's say, so for instance, we have the balance scorecard and we can measure KPIs and the objective based on the perspective of balance scorecard. So it's financial, it's um, customers, internal processes, and employee learning and growth related uh, KPIs. So for, for one side, we have the four perspectives and we have the, the objective for each perspective. On the other side, when we choose KPIs for each objective of the chosen one from the balance scorecard, we have to balance the KPIs. We will have KPIs that show efficiency or effectiveness. So we will have KPIs that show quality versus quantity and we will have KPIs that are, let's say, objective and subjective. The subjective one, I'll give you one, um, one example, is, for instance, um, customer satisfaction. This could be a subject, subjective KPI because you can measure their satisfaction, but um, it's subjective. So how satisfied I am with the um, service I received in, uh, in a restaurant it will be based on my expectations, my prior expectations. So this is why these are the main, main types.
So quality, quantity, efficiency, effectiveness, um, and uh, subjectivity, objectivity. All right, and the last question we've received, from what you know in your experience, is there any difference between KPIs and key performance objectives? Well, the, um, the key performance objectives um, and the KPIs. So for for the for the the entire KPIs part, there are a lot of companies using different um, terminologies. So in practice, um, key performance indicators will relate to the actual indicator. So number of a number of um, calls per day or number of invoice uh, processed and key performance like objectives refer to what we measure through that KPI so in in our um, how we recommend it to be is that an objective should be mainly what we want to achieve so increased customer satisfaction for example would be an objective and it will be measured through percentage of customer satisfaction so my recommendation would be to use them differently in order in order not to make um, any misunderstanding so the kpi shows the performance while the objective shows what we want to do by measuring that indicator all right now that was the last question and this brings us to the end of our webinar Alina, do you have any final words for our listeners? Uh, first of all, I want to thank you very much for um, for attending the webinar and for your involvement. Also, um, make sure you have your um, your email addresses written so that we can send you the report. And make sure you don't miss my colleague Christina's webinar, um, which is a follow-up to this one. Thank you very much again and have a great day. Thank you very much once again for your presentation. The KPI Institute appreciates your interest in the webinar Key Performance Indicators Past, Present and Future. Follow our websites and our social media channels to find out more details about our next webinars when they get posted. Also, if you are interested in getting a certification granted by the KPI Institute on vital areas within the performance management discipline, you can explore our scheduled courses on marketplace.kpiinstitute.org. Thank you once again for your participation and have a nice day.